that's the intro. Rocad sponsored this video to promote their new Vulcan Pro. It's a keyboard. You can tell they're German because they snuck in these little German colors on the side. So this is a full 10 key keyboard. It means it has a numpad. Let's uh, get the box opened up. We have a wrist rest. Oh, I love a good peel. This looks like it clips in and it actually has a rubber uh, grips on the bottom to prevent sliding. They easily could have not put rubber on here and just had it on the keyboard. So that's kind of a nice touch. Then we've got the keyboard itself with the cable. Is this detachable? No. Okay, there's nothing else in the box other than this quick installation guide, which I don't want to have to read. So let's put this aside. Haha. <laughs> a lot to notice right away. First things first. Uh, this looks pretty low profile. You might not even need this wrist rest, but if you did have it, is this magnetic? Is that, it literally was that easy. It'll, it'll come off if you lift it, but like, Magnus, that's nice. Okay, yeah, that's sweet. You get very little wrist extension, uh, which is one of like the big three ergonomic things that a keyboard can mess you up on. Uh, does it have, yeah, if you don't like that, you like extending, then why not just put the feet up? That's, this is kind of like the more normal configuration, but it's the key caps that are low profile. The keys themselves look regular size. It's just that they have taken the actual key cap and just pancake eyes it, flattened it right out. I always start by typing James is the best. These are linear AF. Holy, can we plug this in? Okay, there's the lights. Usually you're relying on the light passing through the legend of a double shot injected keycap where you've got the clear plastic behind the, in this case, black, and then the light passes through that. But in this case, they chopped off that part of the keycap. You still get the light through the legend and the housing of the switch itself is transparent. It's clear plastic. So this is a very evenly lit, very bright and vibrant board. Yeah, and th this is their AIMO IMO RGB, which is like an ecosystem from Rocket. You can get headphones and mouse pads uh, and that all sync together to give you, you know, a unified RGB experience, which gives you more FPS and uh, uh, better kill death ratios, I'm told. So nice having a numpad. I mean, okay, there's trade offs. I always need a numpad. This is a, a, a 10 key keyboard, and I would like that because I do Excel and even when you're just entering a password or a two-factor authentication, I hate bouncing around the, num uh, the number line over here. I love having a numpad, that's great. The trade-off for that is potential shoulder pain uh, for ergonomics because you're gonna be like this a lot, which is less ergonomic than this. Uh, it does take up more desk real estate, so if you're gaming, you might have to move your whole keyboard over to get as much, as much mouse real estate as you want. Holy crap, this mouse pad is huge. Okay, my preference is this. If that's not your preference, go for the 10 key list. This is so much different than what I'm used to because I use either tactile or clicky switches and usually you get uh, a tactile feedback when the switch is actuated. So as I press it down, I'm gonna encounter a bump or maybe bottom out on the keypad and that is gonna correspond to the signal reaching the system where the letter appears on screen. Here, it's different. You want your action to happen immediately, like a, a movement, a stray for something. Then you want this keyboard because the actuation is way higher up. On this with the linear switch, it's uh, 1.4 millimeters, even though the whole key travel is like 3.6 millimeters. So it's, I can feel it when I'm typing, it's right at the top. It's so immediate. That's all I have to do to actuate it. This is a, an interesting switch. This is their Titan switch. It's a, it's a combination mechanical and optical switch. So it has the feel of a mechanical switch, but actually um, the signal is being sent by just light getting blocked. So those are supposed to be faster. And if you're a competitive gamer, which I'm not, I suck, <laughs> but I'll take the edge. I'll take anything I can get. Key stability is actually pretty rock solid. I think they have a novel design for that. That's responsible for that. I'm just ripping these things off. Yeah, it looks like they've got like, um, there's some extra shroud around the typical kind of cherry plus sign you see there on the stem. The layout is totally standard, you know, the American flag on the box. There's no wacky, like, key that's shorter than normal. They've got an aluminum top plate here. Now, one of the differences between the Pro and the non-Pro, um, number one, the big one is optical mechanical switches. But the other thing is the top plate. They also have an aluminum top plate on the non-Pro, but it 
isn't stealthed out and blacked out. This is just black all around. On the other one, you're gonna have like a kind of a chrome edge on it. And everyone knows stealth is more premium. This is pretty rigid. There's not a lot of deck, deck flex here, for, especially for a, a 10 key. Uh, a lot of the time you can feel like, oh, this is such a stiff keyboard. That's great. But it's a 10 keyless or even like a 60 or something like a really small, small one. And those small ones, they barely flex even if they're just cheap plastic. Uh, lots of rubber feet on the bottom. Not just a couple strips, but like uh, the whole bottom. At least two thirds of the top here and even on the feet and both sides of the feet. When the feet are closed, there's a rubber strip. And up top, it's just binary, up or down. We have some media buttons. On the top row, that's pretty standard. You can function calculator, bam. Now, we what you don't always see is a knob for volume. This one happens to be ratcheted and doesn't have a top or bottom. It just goes, goes, goes. Then you've got big buttons for mute. Those are really nice. Oh, okay, it looks like there's some indicators down here. There's a game mode. Game mode, of course, makes it so that when you hit the Windows key, the menu doesn't pop up. That can be uh, really disruptive in a game. Another thing about these switches in particular, as opposed to the non-pro, these ones are rated for 100 million keystrokes. On the non-pro, they're 50 million keystrokes. Uh, why don't we weigh this thing with our special scale? I'll get this braided cable up off the table for the weight. 900 grams even. Uh, kind of a good middle weight. Uh, I would say like when you're at like 600, that's too light, that's cheap. Um, and when it's over a thousand, that's kind of when it's like a chonk. 900's respectable. So that is pretty much it. I do want to see how long this cable is. Can you unplug that? This is a braided cable. I think if you get the non-pro, it's not braided. This is 1.8 meters, it seems to me. Pretty good, and it has the little keyboard picture on there, which is always uh, appreciated when you're at the back of your machine trying to figure out what the hell corresponds to what. That's nice. Uh, you got six macro keys right there. There's onboard mem memory and processing. You take stuff with you. I think this is a pretty good and good looking keyboard. So if you guys like this, please check it out at the link below. You can get it from Best Buy, not sold out there. Finally, something you can actually buy. So thanks for watching Short Circuit today. If you like this video, give us a like, give us a subscribe, and come back next time when I'm gonna review a Christmas tree holder. The little thing at the bottom, I like the ones with the spikes that go into the wood. I'm just joking, I'm not gonna do that.